b u r n i n g question, I would like to pass the floor to k u n s u k s i l i for the second uh, presentation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm very honored to be here. Thank you, uh, Ajahn t a m r o n g r a t for inviting us and having u n i d o s here. Well, uh, first of all, uh, after Janet's uh, very insightful presentation, I'm going to bring you all a little bit kind of a step back in terms of the STI. And SDG in general first, and and then I'm I'm going just to um, introduce um, what UNIDO is doing in terms of STI and uh, SCP. So because uh, also Dr. t a m r o n g r a t mentioned to us um, earlier in his uh, opening remarks in terms of the STI being important part of this uh, 2013 uh, 2030 agenda of the UN, and um, I'm going to talk a little bit on that as well. Right. So. Um, Just very quick introduction for those who may not uh, know what UNIDO is. Um, the the name in short reads very similar to a Japanese company, but we are part of our United Nations family. Um, is United Nations Industrial Development Organization headquarters based in Vienna, Austria, and this is us. Here, in a group of specialized agencies that is part of the Economic and Social Council, so we are in the same group as uh, FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization, and WHO, the World Health Organization, and even the World Bank, also in the same group. Um, inclusive and industrial development. Inclusive and sustainable industrial development is our mission, and uh, so far we have 167 member states as a part of our um, governing body. So this is inclusive and sustainable industrial development. So we have around 40 offices around the world, including regional office in Bangkok, that that I belong to, as well. Then moving on to our core thematic areas, and in relation to that, with the SDGs, so we have three groups of the expertise. One is um, poverty reduction, aiming at creating shared prosperity. Second is advancing economic competitiveness, including um, trade capacity building and ISO building countries' uh, stand, uh, capacity on standards, international standards. So that's uh, trade tool, the international st uh, trade standards, let's say ISO, and um, those uh, even the, the EU Uh, energy star label. That's also we consider it a, a trade tool. And lastly, is where we belong. Our discussion most uh, going to discuss in this group is the safeguarding environment, which um, focusing on uh, low carbon and low emission industrial development. That's about it. So these are 17 goals that. Uh, Dr. t a m r u n g r a t uh, mentioned earlier was uh, this set of goal was adopted in um, September 2015 in General Assembly in New York. And from these 17 goals, most of our work um, contribute to most of our go most of the goals. And um, in particular, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve. 
uh, which Jenny just mentioned, 13, climate action, which is the Paris Agreement, um, 14, 15, and 17. Now, we're going to mention 17 also because of STI under this uh, Agenda 2030 is considered means for implementation. So basically, you cannot achieve other goals without having STI in place. So that's why is this all STI are under goal 17, and these are the goals. Uh, these are the targets under this goal. So basically, in um, un under goal 17. There are other means of implementation on SDGs as well, including financing of SDG as well as partnership. So there are uh, three targets that contribute to this goal 17 that's focusing on STI. So basically, um, goal Target six, focusing on anything relating to technology transfer. So this includes South-South technology transfer, North-South, or triangular technology transfer. And um, the second one, uh, target seven, focusing on technology development, uh, technology diffusion, and commercialization of technologies. But here, there is a trick. The, the indicator to measure the progress of this target is just talk about technologies that focusing on environmentally sound technologies. So um, our session here and uh, what uh, our colleagues have mentioned this morning are pretty much timely and linked to this one, sorry. are pretty much linked to um, the goal 17 in terms of technology transfer, uh, technology development and diffusion and commercialization of envir environmentally sound technologies. So that's including SCPs as well, low carbon and low emissions. And lastly, um, lastly the, the um, target aid Although it says here it's focused on various types of um, technology, but in a nutshell, this goal uh, target 18, focusing on number of population, number of individuals that have access to internet, right? So all in all, these targets under 17, un under technology, uh, under 17, and under goal 17, it just focus on firstly technology transfer in all form. It can be domestic technology transfer that NASA has been doing that uh, they transfer technology from, from their lab to private sector, to people within Thailand and outside Thailand so that uh, can be cross-border technology transfer as well as uh, triangular technology transfer, the projects that um, partners working under with UN agencies that would call um, triangular technology transfer. And uh, so, sec so that's the, f the, f the, the, the first um, emphasize. Second one is uh, environmentally sound technologies. So this this target pretty much focusing on environmentally sound technologies. So SCP and our session here is very timely that can contribute to this um, target. And lastly, this uh, target focus on ICT, which is information, communication, and technology. So which, again, is in a nutshell, looks at internet connection and numbers of population that have access and use internet. So based on this uh, um, kind of a target, 
um, the UN also set up this uh, task force and STI forum. So the UN in New York organized STI forum every now and then, and then I'm sure um, Ajahn Tamrung Rad mentioned that um, NASDA also have uh, sent uh, regularly the delegates to attend this forum. So this kind of venue that helps uh, member states moving forward and moving forward on STI for S SDGs and, and is provide a forum for uh, technology transfer and exchange. I, there is an interagency working on this STI and there is STI roadmap to achieve SDG. And even they are now establishing um, technology banks so that, that can be something that can looking forward to and then Thailand can tap into whether um, we can be the one provide technology, technology providers in a sense, or can be still working with other countries to see if there is any technology that we would like to improve upon within um, countries. So that's about it for, for, for the foundation of uh, STI and uh, SDG in general. Now going back to UNIDO, so what we are doing that can contribute to this STI for SDGs, so here we have a showing of the overall portfolio of UNIDO. So basically we are doing pretty okay in terms of almost half of our portfolio which is yeah, almost 50% um, of the project that under that can classify as STI projects are focusing on uh, environmentally sound technologies, which can be uh, energy technologies or water pollution technologies or um, reduction of uh, the use of hazardous chemicals kind of approach as well. This just to show you guys, um, previously is kind of uh, in terms of numbers. Second, in terms of the qualitative. If we take out the wordings in our project documents, so these words are showing up, showed up uh, pretty often here in our work. Um, my last segment here, I'm going to talk about um, what we are doing in, in real kind of in projects that we using these overarching goals of STI for SDGs and linking it up with our uh, mandate. So I'm going, so the first one is again, thanks to NASDA um, that financed a research study on uh, setting up a database on SDG 9.4.1, which is uh, carbon intensity per manufacturing value added. This can be also a very, it's, it's, it's not just setting up a database, is also uh, enlightening kind of uh, researchers and as well as policy makers that with this SDG 9.4 target, countries cannot use the inventory that uh, country develops for the convention, the UN convention, and just divide it, that figure by GDP because it, it the, the scientific kind of calculation needs to be done to correct, to make those two data sets compatible. So this is again thanks to um, Dr. Tamrung Rat and the team. I'm not going to go into detail. We can have a separate session on this later on because to achieve this database for SDG 9.5, Four, you have to have a different calculating method than the one that the UN Convention on Climate Change obligates country to do so. But there is already internationally accepted kind of a methodology to do that. So in, in this project, we have done that. Second one, we are um, 
we are introducing eco industrial town approach or another term is uh, industrial industry urban symbiosis so basically it's stemming from uh, resource efficiency and cleaner production within factory and then exchange between factories in terms of materials and waste within on within an industrial cluster and we expand that exchange between industrial cluster to um, community that lives around that particular industrial cluster. The exchange can be called symbiosis in terms of economic symbiosis or material symbiosis or waste symbiosis as well. So that's the first one. The second one, we have this approach on chemical leasing. So in a nutshell, instead of companies purchase um, chemicals, let's say chemicals by, uh, by uh, unit. The, the chemicals provider offer to sell that company their clients in terms of the overall service of how that chemical is going to be applied to that client. For example, a car company, instead of they buy color paints of their car in terms of units, buy one bucket, two buckets, right? And then they're going to use, that, use their own labor to, to spray all the paints themselves in a factory. Instead, we try to turn this around. We offer an approach with the chemical companies that they can offer service of painting the cars to the, so, to the clients. So this way, since the, 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 the paint owner also would like to get the maximum volume of the uh, car that is painted B with the minimal color paints they use. So they're going to optimize the way they paint the car. So this way, the waste from, the waste from car painting is going to be less, and the waste water, the water that need, need, normally need to clean those paints in that factory is going to be less as well. So basically, it, this approach turns away, I mean, turns around the way you use chemicals. Instead of purchase by, by unit, the chemical is purchased by service and by volume instead. Um, three minutes, okay, I think I'm going to be fine. And the second one, again, I'm going, I have this video as well. I, if, if you have time, either this afternoon or during break, I really would like um, um, it to be shown because it actually can show you how, first of all, how hazardous chemicals, no matter how hazardous it is, their livelihood is still more important in terms of some group of people. So basically, these are the gold, small gold miners in West Africa that they are mining gold using hazardous chemicals. And the project is um, offer them how to be cleaner so that they still can earn money from gold mining as well as uh, not exposing themselves and their families and the environment on chemical release, um, mercury release from these uh, exercises. So that is also one of our projects in, in this area. And the next one, this one is in Thailand. We work with um, Ministry of Industry um, in terms of greening the whole supply chain of scrap metal. Because um, Thailand is among the largest uh, countries that, ha that house scrap metal industries. So basically, we don't have, th the country doesn't have enough scrap 
to process within the country that it needs to even purchase the scrap metals. Right, and then the process of uh, producing and recycling this scrap metal turned it into a very high quality metal that can be used again in other products. This can be very um, poisoning as well as emits uh, dioxin, which is one of the chemicals that is listed under Stockholm Convention. So in this project, we helped um, the, the whole supply chain in terms of how they purchase and then how they get the scrap metal even from the retailers here domestically and how they're going to um, correct them, store them and treat them and recycle, recycle them into uh, metals, how they're going to do all of this, the whole process to be cleaner and emit less uh, hazardous chemical, which is dioxin in this case. And to do so, they can also um, can reduce their energy use in their furnace, in, in their recycling process as well. And some of the methods that we are uh, introduced uh, Giving training, uh, uh, giving our training to our um, partners is as easy as just clean your scrap metal and kind of just use the cloth and just wrap it and store it by uh, by type of the scrap. So basically, the the approach to prevent the um, emission of hazardous chemical at the end of the process. The, these practices can be as easy as just you change your method, the way you store these scrap metals. Because it's, um, the, the emission can just come from oil contamination that is uh, co come into contact with the scrapped metal by accident because the, the, the scrap ventures, they don't, they are not aware of this fact. So basically the, the, the approach that we're introducing here can be as, can, 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 can just be a change of uh, behavior as well as technology investments to get a better um, furnace or better scrap uh, air emission treatment. Oh, sorry. I think, and that's my last one. Thank you.